Math 31, welcome to section 5.8. We're going to do some modeling using variation. So you've heard this phrase modeling before when we were talking about regression, meaning we were looking at data and fitting either a linear, a cubic, a quartic, a quadratic model, that kind of thing. This is a little bit different. It's not gonna involve data, but we are gonna look at different types of variation. And the, the two different types are direct and inverse. So we're going to solve problems using direct variation, using inverse variation and joint variation. And let me just give you a brief overview of this. When we talk about direct variation, this means two variables are heading in the same direction. So here we would say X and Y are headed in the same direction. And if you're wondering what that sentence means, it means as x goes up, y also goes up. Or on the flip of that, if x is going down, y is also going down. So they're either both heading up or both heading down. They're headed in the same direction, okay? And now in terms of inverse variation, X and Y are headed in opposite directions. And when I say that sentence, what I'm trying to convey is that as X goes up, this time Y heads down, right? Or vice versa, as X heads down, Y heads up. And when we start to go through these problems in section one, what you're gonna see is that when we're dealing with direct variation, the operation we're going to use is multiplication. All right, so you'll see a bunch of multiplication get applied when we're talking about direct variation. And then when we get to the inverse variation problems, that's gonna involve division. So we're gonna be using those two math operations today. Multiplication when we have direct variation, division when we have inverse. And when you hear me talk about joint, it's trying to convey that I'm combining these. I might have a couple of direct variations with the joint, oh, excuse me, with an inverse. Maybe I have a couple of inverses. Maybe I have three directs, one inverse. It just depends on the wording of the problem. But joint just means that there's more than two variables in play. Maybe there's an X, Y, and a Z, or an X, Y, Z, and W. Really depends on what the word would say in the problem. All right, so with that, let's start looking at direct variation. So Y varies directly as X, or we could say Y is directly proportional to X. If there exists a non-zero real number K called the constant of variation, such that for all x, y is equal to k times x. So I just want you to take note here, there is multiplication involved. And I mentioned this just up top, right? I said the operation we'll see is multiplication. And I have k times x here. All right, so this is an example of direct variation. All right, so we have direct variation between y and x. As x gets larger, y will get larger. There's a constant of proportionality here, and, and we'll figure out what that is for our particular problem. But that's your basic direct variation formula. And it doesn't have to just be x to the first power. Y can be directly proportional to the square of x, the cube of x, the fourth power of x. It really, again, it goes back to it depends on the word problem. So basic direct variation formula, I wanna give you a heads up. Don't marry yourself to y and x. All right, I'm gonna start changing letters in this, in this section and just use whatever letters I give you. All right, so with that, let me scooch this up a bit and then let's take a look at our first problem together. All right, so here we go. It says if y varies directly as the square root of x and y equals 12 and x equals four, find y when x is 100. All right, with these variation problems, first of all, I want you to take note that I said direct variation. When you hear direct variation, you're like, all right, I'm gonna use multiplication. All right, and it looks like the letters I'm giving you, for example, one, R and D, Y and X. As I mentioned, I will change these, 
but for example one I thought it was a good idea to leave them as is. So when you have direct variation you're going to use multiplication all right, we're going to have a constant of proportionality, so y will be equal to k times. Now we won't do k times x here because I was told to use the square root of x. And again, as we go through these word problems, we're just going to follow along with whatever the setup is. And in this case, it's the square root of x. All right, so once you get your equation, how these problems kind of break down is there's always a complete set of information. There's always an ordered pair that you were given. And if you look here, I have an ordered pair. We see it y is 12 when x is 4. So from here, I can hear the ordered pair 4 comma 12. All right. And over here, when you say find y when x is 100, there's an incomplete ordered pair. Right? I, they didn't give me y, which is fine. That's how all of these play out. Take the complete ordered pair and plug it into your formula to solve for k. Because if I know y and I know x, I can solve for k. And, and I do know y and x, right? I know y is 12 and x is 4. So let's do it. 12 would equal k times the square root of 4. And I think you'll give me the square root of 4 is 2. So we're getting 12 equaling 2k. So I can see k is equal to 6. So I can move this problem along. And instead of writing this general equation of y equaling k root x, I know our k for our particular problem is six. So as you start to progress through these problems, start with your variation equation, whether it's direct, inverse, joint. Take your complete ordered pair, or potentially ordered triple when we get into joint variation, but take that complete ordered pair and solve for your constant of proportionality. And then you get your equation, that's your variation equation, and now we can do it. When x is 100, what is y? Well, I'm gonna just plug this in. So if I want to solve for this, I will say, well, for this ordered pair, I would have 6 times the square root of 100. And that would ultimately leave me, you know, you can do this, 6 times 10, 60, right? So then my end answer, if I want to finish this out, is y is equal to 60. So what is the y value when x is 100? It's 60. All right, so with that, we're going to move on to the next problem. I'm going to change letters. All right, and we're going to map out a process for how we solve these problems. I'll see you in a bit. Bye.